Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. All right. I know that many of you have heard me say um, when scriptures get tough, we wrestle until we get a blessing. Um, Our Old Testament is where I get that reference from. So if you ever were like, why does she keep saying that? Um, It's a reference to to Jacob wrestling with God. And I think um, one of the themes that we often get handed to um, in Christianity is this sense of obedience. Uh, Do what you're told all the time. But I'm going to push back on that a little bit and tell us to look at our scriptures today. Because there's something to be said for being a stubborn old mule. Um, And um, as Missourians, we can kind of attest to that. Did you know that mules are actually um, used frequently because a horse, and do not get me wrong, I adore horses. If you know me, um, I adore all animals, but I adore horses. Yeah, who knew? Who knew? (laughs) Meg is constantly covered in fur of some sort. It's glitter. It's nature's glitter. Okay. Um, however, horses are kind of dumb. They um, are not good at preserving their own safety. So the reason that you can send horses into battle and that all these things will happen, because horses will do what they're told, right, if they're trained well. Um, other horses are like, heck no. Like my horse, um, he would jump over things because he hated water. So he, would, he was like, I ain't doing that. But mules do not care about you, okay? Mules care about mules. And so mules can be really handy because they will not do anything that could potentially harm a said mule, okay? They are stubborn, stubborn. And that is what mules are known for, their stubbornness. And I want us to think about that today because that's one of the um, underlying themes of our scriptures today is that in that persistence, so I want you to hear that word again and again because it keeps coming up in these scriptures, persistence. This idea that we stick with it, and in sticking with it, there is blessing. Um, and many of us do not have a whole lot of persistence when it comes to God. Um, we kind of want God to be a vending machine. And I say the things, I get the things, we're good. Right? That's what prayer looks like. And so we're going to talk a little bit about prayer and how that is not what prayer looks like. Sometimes prayer looks like fighting with God, like Jacob is. Because did you realize that's God, right? Jacob is literally wrestling with this divine being, which ends up. um, But it doesn't feel good at the time for Jacob. In fact, he walks away with a limp. And I feel like I should make an allusion to that of some sort. But you guys all know it. Um, that is important. And Paul talks about this persistence, right? And even in our gospel, we have this sense of persistence, that it is in persistence that we grow and are changed. And that's important. Because when we talk about prayer, we generally think that prayer looks like this. I say the words, I get the thing. I want the thing. I desire the thing. God should grant me the thing, right? We pray to God for stuff. Or we pray that God does stuff for us. What if I tell you that that's wrong? What if I tell you that prayer usually is going to be silence? What if I tell you that prayer is actually listening? What if I tell you that prayer is wrestling and is frequently uncomfortable and you will walk away changed? Because prayer is not about changing God. And we want it to be, right? We want to say, I want this thing. I want God to go out and give justice to these people. I want God to help the poor. I want God to stop the wars. I want God to help people in need. I want God to to heal the sick help the lonely. God, go do those things. But God does those things through us. 
So prayer is not about asking God to do the things. Prayer is about asking God to be empowered to do the things that God calls us to do. Prayer will not make you feel better. It won't. Sometimes it will hurt. Because in prayer, we are called to do God's work in this world. Prayer is entered into in silence. It is a place of questioning and openness. It is not a command to God. It's not God as a vending machine. Because God doesn't exist to serve us. What if I tell you that we exist to serve God? That our true purpose is as God's loved creation. That is our purpose. That is our purpose. God doesn't exist to serve me, to make all the stuff that I want come true. And that's tough, folks. That is a tough thing for us as Christians to really get a hold of. And that is why Paul says, heads up, heads up, you're going to be tempted by people who come and tell you that God looks another way. You're going to be tempted by things that make you feel good. You're going to be tempted when people preach gospel that sounds fuzzy to you. That sounds like, ooh, that just sounds, sounds great. God is my vending machine. That is the best gospel that could ever be preached, right? If God loves you. No, I got to say it right. If God loves you. No, 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 no. Problem is my teeth aren't white enough. And my Bible's not floppy enough. If God loves you real good, then you are going to prosper and be successful. You just got to believe in the Lord and pray harder. And if you do, an Acura will appear in your driveway. Yeah. What if I tell you that's not true. What if I tell you sometimes God will knock your hip out of place? What if I tell you it won't feel good? What if I tell you at the end of the book they're going to crucify him? And it is not his smooth words or his feel-good commands. They're going to help him at that time. It is God who will resurrect. It is God who saves. It does not feel good. It is not success as we think of it. It is none of those things. Prayer does not look like that. The toughest and most important prayer that you will ever pray is thy will be done. And it's tough. And we pray it all the time, right? We pray the Lord's Prayer and we don't even think about it. My kids have been praying the Lord's Prayer since they were babies every night. And I'm not sure any of us really grasp how tough the prayer is that we're praying. How tough it is to say, thy will be done. Do we mean it? Do we mean it? Or what we're really praying is, God, make my will be done. Please. Like, I'm begging. It would be great. No. No, it was never that. It was always, thy will be done. So as we talk about prayer, which is super, super important, and it's kind of a tricky topic, isn't it? Is it something that we all wrestle with? Yes, we all struggle with our spiritual lives, right? Um, and it's because we have this dichotomy, right? We have the personal spirituality. I don't need church because I'm spiritual but not religious. I don't know how that works because, like, this religious, spiritual thing is tough. So how you're doing this in your own little world, I don't know, but God bless if you can. Or we have, it's all about community. It's all about this. It's all about, you know, the, the community and the justice and the going out and the doing the things, right? And it's easy to get stuck in one or the other, right? It's all about my spirituality. It's all about my personal relationship with God. That is super important. It is all about the community. It's all about justice. It's all about changing the world. Absolute 100%. It is. It is a both and. And it is a you can't do one properly without the other. They are two sides of the same coin. And they are vital for you to be able to live the Christian life. 
you got to do it together, and you got to do it in private. You just do. But we struggle with prayer sometimes in the Episcopal Church because sometimes we're so excited about community, and we're so excited about changing the world, and we're so excited about the stuff that we're doing that sometimes we forget the prayer part, the spirituality, the, like, one-on-one with God. And we're like, I don't know if I want to be one-on-one with God because, like, God does stuff and then, like, changes my world, and that's tricky. So um, the Episcopal Church is, we are so good at writing prayers. So good. Like, we have um, an algorithm. Did you know this? We have an algorithm for how to write collects. That's why they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Because first, you call upon God. You tell God something about God's self because God didn't know. And you say it in really good words. And then you say it, you ask for the thing that it is that you want. And then you follow up with some flowery reminders of who God is. Usually Trinitarian, because sometimes God forgets who God, I don't know. But we got to, rem- so we do this little sandwich method, right? And we do it in beautiful language, because as Episcopans, we love language. We just do, and we're good at it. And sometimes it is really easy to get stuck in that rut of just use a prayer somebody else wrote because it's pretty. And when I pray, it's not pretty. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, it's not pretty. And so we really want pretty prayers. I feel like that should be a bumper sticker somewhere. (laughs) The Church of the Pretty Prayer. Um, But I invite you to think about prayer differently. I invite you to think about prayer as a place that you enter into with God, and it begins in silence. It begins in openness and a question. You don't have to have words. It's actually in silence that God speaks the loudest. I don't care if you're outside and listening to the rustling leaves. I don't care. I don't care if you're doing the dishes. I don't care if you're vacuuming. Because here's another tricky thing. This is something that full-time clergy get to worry about. We get to talk about how prayer should look. You should do these things. You should do meditation. There should be candles. There should be all sorts of things, and you're going to set half an hour aside three times a day. If that works for you, God bless. I think that's fantastic because that's really, really powerful. However, most of us who are living our real lives do not have that kind of time. We don't get to pray the the hours. That's why the monks were doing it. They were doing it on behalf of everyone else because nobody else had time. That's where that medieval degree comes in handy again. I can tell you, they got time. We and I... Chances are you don't have time. Okay, let's just be real. But prayer is not something separate that you do at other times. Prayer is a way that you live your life. So what if, while you're on your commute to work, what if, while you're getting ready in the morning, what if, while you're vacuuming, while you're doing chores, while you're mowing, what if that is a time of prayer? What if in your entire life you have an openness and a willingness to enter into silence? What if? Does that look different? Does it look different than a thing that you set aside and special words that you say? And what if, just what if, at the end of that you can say, thy will be done? That's going to be my next tattoo. Y'all are like, please, no more. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.